Well, it's okay. We still got more stuff to explore down this way. Remember, we had here doors we go. over here. However, that's also leading in the same direction, I believe, of the demon. No, the door, I think, is there. So let's do this one. Oh, well, we found bad guys. All right, now Lon can't even make line of sight with these guys, so he has to move considerably to get within range of these dudes. What we can do is we can delay his turn like this behind Sela's. And that gives Sela a chance to move and get out of his way, which is why I'm thinking that that's the way to go here. Now, because she's here, Wizard Champion. Oh, yeah, Wizard's dying. Bye, Wizard. All right, now Lon can come in here and not really be impeded all that much. You crossed the wrong mom. Wow, even with point blank shot on. Oh, don't go after him. He's got good armor. You don't want to fuck with him. Uh, I'm gonna have her come over here. Stabby, stabby. You are today's sacrifice. Oh, okay, tough dude. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, swing on in here, brother. Ooh, that was good. And notice how that discharged my spell. That spell's been sitting in there this entire time. So when I did my uh, touch of fatigue, uh, so if we scroll down here, you'll see that I hit 6 and 22. Wow, I rolled well. And there's a fortitude save, though he succeeded, which means the touch of fatigue did not work. But it tried to. Let's see if it's turning. Now we're ganging up on this dude. Something fierce. Uh, if we want to speed things up, we could literally shut off uh, the turn-based mode and go back to real-time with pause and just let the team just wail on the guy. But that's problematic insofar as uh, they could straight up do stupid shit. I'm going to have Lon backpedal out a little bit here. Make every strike count. Melee, you don't have to. Yeah. yeah. Hit my tank. Good job. Buff your weapon, hunt. You can buff your weapon, dude, brother. Damn you! Damn you! Alright, I want to check that attack on his just to prove to ourselves. So you don't. You see, we get the plus two from flanking. That's just, like I said, a default. So as long as two people are meleeing one character and you're flanking him. Uh, there's no. Uh, what I was looking for was there's no minus two penalty to my swing because these two things are on. And yes, I was correct. They're, they're not on because I didn't cast a spell this round. If I cast any spell, I could have done so and then still attacked, but then I would have had a minus two penalty to my swing. No glory without risk. She's doing work, man. That plus eight. That's a pretty. And again, he's armored up pretty good. Now, uh, again, for frame of reference, we went on the hardest difficulty, on some of the harder difficulties. This guy's armor class would be up. Six points. Why six? Because they would give you four points of just generic armor. So you would see just like a, it would say like hard difficulty or some shit, plus four. Uh, so you get plus four for that. And this is for all the bad guys you'll fight. Then you'll also see his stats go up four points. Well, what does that mean? That means his dexterity went up four more points, which means this dexterity bonus goes up from plus two to plus four. Four points of dexterity is plus two more to your dexterity armor class. So again, that's why I say he would have went up six. So he would have had like a 28 fucking armor class, guys. And we're up like level two right now. That's why I say the harder difficulties, you really have to know the game. And uh, I hate to say it, but it's it's the one where min-maxers are going to kick ass. Because they know the game. Because they min-max. Because they know the tricks. So that's a bummer. But there's ways around almost every solution. So... Don't get discouraged if you're trying the harder difficulty because you're like, I'm a badass, I can totally do it. And you're dying left and right. I do too, and I know the game reasonably well from playing Kingmaker. So, again, like, I buffed her so she has a good weapon buff. I could buff her even more with this and the team, for that matter. So, again, it's one of those things that we really could. I could give her a better damage output by putting a large person on her or or Zila over here and have her just, like, wail on the motherfucker. Yes, it's a penalty to her dexterity and her swing, but it's also a bonus to her swing because of the higher strength. Her weapon would do more damage. She'd have better reach. Again, there's a lot of pluses here we could have ticked. I can use her spell right here to guide her on the next swing and give her a plus one. Matter of fact, that's not the worst idea ever. 
but I think the I'll just spirits demand your blood. Yeah, that was worth it. And he's almost dead. Now, Volker's turn. Now remember, I have both those on. Swing one, swing two, and on the second. And yet he still made this successful fortitude save, so didn't do shit. It's okay. Two attacks is better than one sometimes, even if two attacks are at a minus two penalty. Alright. Flail. Cultist heavy shield. Wizard got anything on him? He does. Almost new diary. The diary contains only one entry on the very first page. Life is shit. <laughs> nice. While my brethren, although what kind of brothers are they really, are having a great time uh, up on the surface, I'm stuck down here with Hosilla, the nightmare, and the mongrel scum. To top it all off, a pipe sprung a leak, and an elemental is smashing up the kitchen, and Hosilla is sending it to slaughter everyone it meets in the maze's passageways. All I can do is hide around corners, under beds, and in cupboards. I don't want to die. This isn't how I pictured it, serving Baphomet. This isn't how I pictured it at all. So again, these guys are serving Baphomet at the Demon Lord. A light crossbow, punching dagger. I'm going to take the diary. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, lots of potions. I'm liking that. Alright, this is going to be a chance to heal up without having to take a knee. Because I don't want to burn multiple days trying to find these kits. This could be bad. So, the uh, let's see what we got here. We got Doro here. Who's wounded? Let's look at that real quick first. I'm wounded. And I got 20 of these things. I'm going to start using. Uh, click. Right click. Click. Alright. Uh, and. As for Heavy Flail. As for Glaive. Uh, I'm going to get rid of her. Oh, sure. It has a Mass for Glaive. We must have found another one. Oh, okay, cool. Um. Yeah, and she's agile, so am I. We're both dex based characters, so it'd be a bad idea to pass the glaive to us. <laughs> Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Shiny Titan. A couple of potions. Matter of fact, let's pass her one of the potions just in case. Shield of Faith is a, a plus two deflection buff if you're using it from a potion. Uh, plus five maximum if you are using it as an actual spell or if you're a specific type of alchemist. They have the ability to upgrade potions. That's why if you ever want to make a a good triumvirate team. Uh, spoilers for an old video I've done. Um, three characters. You and, and, and either two people on your party, if any of them fall under this category, then you'd be real happy because you can make this party work. You need an alchemist of some kind. You need a scroll savant, which is a subclass of wizard. And you would need a magus of some kind. If you can do all those three th classes in your team composition, your triumvirate, uh, then you have really good use of wands, if you want, of scrolls, if you want, and potions, if you want. That is key. And the reason that that's key is because you have literally uh, dozens of potions coming your way. Uh, getting the best bang for your buck out of them, that's the alchemist's job. For scrolls, scroll savant is kind of like a no-brainer. But they can use scrolls, once they get to a certain level, better than anybody. Even better than the classes that should be able to use those scrolls. For example, a scroll savant is a wizard. Giving them a healing spell or, or a cleric spell like this, divine favor, is something they could do if you use magic device check, sure. But clerics would probably be able to just click it and use it and, and be done with it. Scroll savants, when they get to a certain level, they can damn near use any scroll if you build them right. And it's not just that they can use it, they can use it better than the caster level that's inherent to the scroll. Much like the alchemist makes the potions better, the scroll savant makes the scroll better based on their scroll savant levels. That only unlocks at level 10, uh, but that's a scroll savant is super powerful for shit like that because again, you're just like a wizard with just like stuff filled with pockets full of scrolls and just like whipping out spells left and right of any kind. And then... Um, the other one, the, the Magus, I specifically said was for wands. And the wands, uh, the reason that they're special is uh, the Magus will unlock, most Magus, I should say, will unlock the ability to use wands, if they so choose, uh, two different ways. One is called Wand Wielder. Uh, notice how the Magus can cast spells 
and attack at the same time if you have spell combat and spell strike on. Well, that doesn't apply for wands unless you have wand wielder. The other one that they get that's particularly powerful is wand mastery, and that sounds awesome. It's not as awesome as you think. What it does, though, is a wand, much like a scroll, much like a potion, has a built-in caster level, like you're seeing right now. The scroll of divine favor, if you look down at the bottom, it says caster level 1. The spell could get better if you were caster level 9, for example. That's why a scroll savant would be awesome with it. Now go back to wands. The wand has a built-in caster level. It also is implied that they have a built-in DC check. Same with scrolls, same with potions. So, well, potions are buffs, so they probably don't have a DC check. But the point is, the the DC check is set in, in, in let's see if I can find a spell. Haze of Dreams. Here you go. See how the DC check at the bottom there, the difficulty class, the DC is 11. The reason for that is it's in a level 1 spell. So now, here's how the DC check works on, on uh, items. Okay, you, Routinely, it works this way for scrolls and uh, wands we're talking about. So the DC check is always a 10, base 10, plus the level of the spell, in this case 1, so 10, 1 is 11. Now you'd say, well, that's done. Sure, there's more to it than that, though. It also has to have the casting stat. The casting stat is usually intelligence or wisdom or charisma. As such, the minimum casting stat you would need to cast the spell is what's applied. So what would you need? Let's say the Haze of Dream was a wizard spell. I'm fairly certain it is. So that would be an intelligence-based uh, casting stat, and as such, it's a level 1 spell. Well, what intelligence do you need to cast a level 1 spell? 11. There is no plus 1, plus 2, plus anything from an intelligence of 11. 10 and 11 are damn near the same as far as the game is concerned. But 11 is needed to cast this level 1 spell. So the DC check here is 10 base plus 1 to level the spell plus the bonus from your casting stat. In this case, plus 0. You're just not seeing it because, again, it's a zero. That's why it's 11. Now, if it was a wand and it had wand mastery, what it does is it applies my intelligence or my charisma or my casting stat to the wand instead of the innate bonus from the wand. So like I just said, the, the innate bonus for this scroll would be a uh, intelligence of 11. The, uh, so a plus zero, so the bonus would be plus zero. If, if I was using it as a wand and I had wand mastery, uh, for example, for this character, if it was, say, a wisdom check, she'd get a plus three instead of a plus zero. That's why those three builds, the, the scroll savant, a magus of some kind that got the wand wielder, wand mastery, and an alchemist of some kind are amazing. And again, the alchemist has to unlock their ability to make their potions better. But they have two ways of doing that. One is they can just double the duration. So you see how this potion lasts for one minute? Because it's caster level one built into the potion. See that? It says caster level one. Go up to the duration above where it says one minute for caster level. So again, its default is one, so it will last for one minute. Uh, Alchemists can unlock uh, an ability to double the duration. It's called enhanced potion. Or extend potion, excuse me. Extend potion will allow them to... Uh, increase it by double the duration. So if it went from one minute, now it's two minutes. If it's one round, it's two rounds. If it's ten rounds, it's now twenty. You get the idea. If they the one that drink it, or if they pour it down your throat. If it's in their little fingies and they pour it down your throat, you get that buff. That's awesome. Now, they have another one that's even better than that. It's my favorite of the two. So if I'm limited and I can only pick one of the two, this is the one that I pick. I want to say that's the one that's called Enhanced Potion. It will actually use the, the Alchemist level for the caster level of the potion. So you see how it says caster level 1? That's for everybody else. If I have enhanced potion, and I'm an alchemist, say I'm level 5, now it's caster level 5 for me. Now why is that important? Well, 1, caster level 5 means if 1 minute per level, that's 5 minutes. You can already see that it's better than just doubling it to 2 minutes. If I have both, it's level 5, and it's doubled. And now it's a 10 minute buff, so you can see how potions are amazing for them. And that's not just for something is like the duration is better. No, let's look at something really good shield of faith plus two deflection for everybody else and it only lasts for one minute take that same alchemist right a it's five minutes long because i'm again i'm caster level five and so is my potion now that's five minutes and again that's awesome keep reading though it's a plus two deflection bonus plus one for every six levels maximum of five at level 18 so at level five it's 18 at level 12 it's four at level six it's 
three. So if I was, let's just say I'm jumping you up to level six alchemist now. Again, everyone else would be a plus two for one minute. For me, it's six minutes long, and it'd be a plus three, because it's caster level six. Caster level six is another plus one to it. So you can see by level 18, I can use these terrible cheap-ass potions. I mean, they're, they're worth 25 bucks a piece or something when you buy them in the store. It will last me and my team 20 to 40 minutes every time we drink one. And it'll be a, a plus five bonus to our armor class. Boom. I just blew your minds right there. So again, three builds. An alchemist of some kind, a magus of some kind that has the, the wand wielder, wand mastery, and the scroll savant at level 10. Up until they get to level 10, they're still good. They're still wizards. But level 10 is where you get that kick-ass ability where they can use like any scroll at their caster level. And again, suddenly you become amazing at using the items that are going to be commonly filling up your um, inventory. Enough said. Uh, let's do a quick save here. What's that? that would be fire that you just walked in on. I gotta stop doing that. Usually I do have the pause I on. I do feel like this. it's cheaty though. It's one of those where you're like, if you're really paying attention, like a, a true player would be playing. Ooh, hey there. Cultist. Now what we can do for her, before fi the fight is started, we can actually charge. We are the light. Of course the fight they starts, but she'll finish her charge because she already started moving. And didn't attack though. What the actual hell, bro? That's weird. That must be something that's new. Alright, uh, surprise round. Uh, can she charge from where she's standing? No, because she's big fat heads in the way. Damn you. Alright, well, she can get up in it though. Let's just get her over here. Lon's turn. I need to shut that off for one. And move him this way. Can you hit him from here? Guess we need to have our inspection on for that. You okay. won't so he's a, oh, he's a four cleric, one fire. He's tough. Chaotic evil. So now that's actually other good information for you right now. Uh, all the spells and stuff that he has access to. Yep, yep. He's got a lot of shit going for him. Oof, that's going to be rough. Okay. Why was that chaotic evil? Why knowing that he's chaotic evil? Why was that important? Well, let me explain something here to you. Uh, let me mansplain it to you. Uh... We have a paladin, and a paladin on the team can do something called Smite Evil once she gets her turn. And that Smite Evil is particularly nasty. I could buff my weapon again, but I don't think I want to waste it right now. Nice shot. And again, flat-footed because he hadn't acted yet. So that's probably the only reason it actually worked, because he probably has some dexterity. Yeah, maybe not. That was pretty good, though. Uh, I want to end my turn. His turn now. Oof. Remember I was talking about that smite evil. We literally can smite evil this guy. It would be wasted on someone, though, that is not evil. You know, unless they patch this out of this game. In Pathfinder Kingmaker, it was you would do smite evil without knowing whether they're evil or not. And you would activate it and waste your smite evil for the day. And then you'd be like, oh, it doesn't do anything because he's chaotic neutral. I'm like, well, son of a bitch. We already know he's chaotic evil because of our inspection. So, again, we're lucky this way. Oh, and that looked nice. And that was some nice damage. And the reason that, that mattered, smite evil, bonus to your swing, and then a bonus to your damage as well. And I forget how that actually works once because of charisma. Charisma bonus to her attack roll. Paladin level to damage rolls. Okay, so the charisma bonus that she had, so she's charisma level plus two. So that plus two was to her swing, and then she's level two paladin, so she got plus two to her damage as well. Now, of course, if you get that charisma higher, which of course we're going to do, that's going to go to at least a 16, that'll be a plus three. Plus three to her swing, and she's going to be paladin level 10, 15, 20 eventually. And that's going to be some hell of damage to add to an evil target. So again, paladins are going to be really good in this game. And I believe she even gets like a buff for armor against this party. In addition, while it's might evil to affect the paladin gains her deflection bonus equal to her charisma bonus, if any, to her armor class 
against this motherfucker. So again, she's getting like a plus two right now against him, but he's not focusing on her, sadly. He's focusing on Camellia. That's a nice effect. They did a really good job making the, the buffs and debuffs now look pretty fucking stellar, I'd say. Can you hit him? Can you hit him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was some solid damage. This guy's tough. All right, now it's my turn. And I'm going to get all up and in it to here. So, I got this. Uh, Camellia, need you to finish him off on asthma again. And off we go. Very nice and done, team. He had a skull cure light wounds. Master of Clay will take this. Dagger. Rest plate. I'm going to take that just for the time being. Uh, I'm going to collect that. We'll take a look at our inventory here right now. The way. Inventory. All right, what we got here? Breastplate. Uh, she could wear that. Uh, it is less armor because it's 7 versus 6. However, the max dexterity goes up to 3. What's her dexterity? Ow. When she gets it to 14, it would be equal to it. And the reason this matters is look how much a uh, male weighs, 35. Look how much breastplate weighs, 30. This is the reason that this is of value. Also, her armor check penalty is lower, minus four versus minus six. That's not that big of a deal. Uh, but I do like the idea of her having better armor now, so I don't want to use that yet. So I'm just going to drop that. No one else is going to wear that. Uh, because she could wear it. Well, hold on a second. Pick that back up. She could wear it. And the reason that that's of value is max dexterity goes down to three, so she'd lose a point, but she's going up two in armor. So that's a net plus. That's not bad. 22 armor class for her, that's, that's she's actually equal to her now. That's pretty goddamn good. Uh, and then chain shirt, I already have one, and he doesn't need one, so we can drop this. Cool. This is the other part of the game that you guys have, have yet to really experience, I think. The constant checking for loot, see what you got that's better. Be surprised how often you're like, oh, I just picked up something. Let me take a quick game at that. I found uh, something. Yeah, sure did. Good job. Uh, I do like the scenes they got set up down here. Good. Why well, we got Flooding, running water. Oh, that must be the pipe. Oh, shit. Uh, we got an elemental to deal with. Stuff to the left. That guy to the left. Hey. We're up to Mongol Guard. Oh, he gets act first. She. Oh, she's a monk, too. All right. Uh, get up in here, Camille. Pick her ass. You wide open. Ooh, she's tough. See you <laughs> yeah, That's my gal. Gotta love paladins, man. Right, I'm gonna five foot stutter step. So I can get to this side without worrying about purple attacks of opportunity. Get a little flanking going on. And Lon, he can now, because she's within range, do that point blank shot. You the wrong oh, road. 24. Lon, you beast. Loving this guy. He's, he's the new Ekin of the team. Let's just say it. Alright. All that stuff. We got a door here. Get over here. Let me figure the thing first. Common mistake for people that play this game. And you see, I've actually taken some damage. So I've actually solved that problem. Because I am a special little snowflake. Here we go. Alon, shut that back off. Do not, do yeah. not waver. Good shot, Lon. Bad shot, Lon. All right, Camellia. Uh, she surprise round. Oh, she's got an upgrade here. I didn't see the Ghost Touch Spirit Enchantment. That Ghost Touch property of weapon. Ghost Touch weapons deal damage normally against incorporeal creatures. Yeah, okay. Not anything that's going to help us right now. That's a nice little addition. Oh, yeah. Invoker. Uh, he's probably just going to get into place. 
Uh, or I can just try the potion. There's Sheila. She can s skip across, but she's in the way. It's alright. Don't flank me. Don't be that guy. Uh, let's have her do their five foot stutter step over here. Yeah, big girl. Uh, it's your turn. Right, now Evoker's ready to rock and roll. He's not able to charge, and I don't think it's anything other than he's in the way. So what we're going to do, delay Sela come over here. Fuck this guy up. Yeah, she can. Oh yeah, blonde. I'm gonna need you, brother, to move. Cause the Evoker's getting blocked. Make every strike yeah. count. Oh, that was pretty. Now. And I do my charge. Nope, still not. Alright, well then I'm just gonna move. I could have stopped sooner and then used like a cantrip. Like a, like a frost or a, a acid splash to hit the son of a bitch. And for minor damage, it probably wasn't going to crit. It was hell, if we're being honest, it probably wouldn't have hit. It was a touch attack proper, so it's easier to hit them. But remember, he is in melee. And I do not have... Um, it's not point blank shot. What's it called? Precise shot. So that I have a minus four penalty to my swing. And that strip sucks. Mm -hmm. Go get it. Go for their hearts! Oh, come on now. That's your finish. The inheritor. Guide she's mean. My Holy blade. shit, that dude's tough. Alright. Five foot stutter step. And I think we're within range of this brick. Endure this! Wow, that was bad. Alright, my turn. Good guys always win. Not when they're whiffing like that, they don't. You are today's sacrifice! <laughs> you are today's sacrifice? Is that what she just said? No blood! Well, I guess it is. Get lost, loser. No gear? Really? Okay. Alright, got that. Put that stuff over here. The goodies. All the goodies. Oh, uh, what's this say? Remember a system of aqueducts channeling water from the river to the city it was seriously damaged in the earthquake. Alright. Take a quick save on that. Inside we go. Hey, mongrel brute. Get in position. Doubt is the heart's greatest challenge. A little stealthy stealth. I don't want her to do that as I was well. never good at stealth. Right here. I'll try. Shoot him up. Fine. Here comes Trump. Ooh, he's a barbarian type, huh? Ooh. All right, what do we know about this prick? If you hover over the portrait, too, by the way, if you inspect them, you get information. So you see that we already have the chaotic evil mongrel. We know that he has reasonably okay defenses. He's really good at reflex saves. Okay, will. Fortitude saves. He's got plus seven to his unarmed strike, and he's got power attack on. And he's raging. Uh, ooh, his strength on 19. Jesus, he's going to hit like a goddamn tank. Um, all right. Uh, when he's next, she... Charge. Not because uh, you see that the path to him is a weird freaking curve because of this crap in the ground. That's actually cool that they did that though. As much as I hate that it's, it's screwing my attack right now. Um, I'm going to move her to here. And I'm going to move her here because I want her to block Lon. Well, it could have been that I had the damn. No, she's not stealth. What am I saying? All right, Volker, oh, you're going to go here. Sure. Amelia, can you charge this fool? She could, but I don't think I want to get her up and in his face. Or do I? I think I do. Yeah, I think I want to charge him. 
I'm going to keep him back there so that he's nowhere near the line. Seela can get a flank on him. Nice. Evoker. Uh, I'm going to do the canter thing I just told you I didn't think was going to do a shit for the other guy. Just because it's something to do. Hey, and I got damage off on him. Noise. Shut that shit off. And I want you to do a five foot stutter step closer. I think he's within range of your point blank shot. You Looks like won't it. Survive me. There we go. Mila, I want to do a five foot stutter step for her too, so she can better place herself. The spirits command your blood. To the There's no proper flanking going on, even though it doesn't matter in this game. What are you going for? Oh, that was a dumbass swing. That was too, apparently. Alright. Mom is just doing work over here. So is she, though. 11 crit. Good job, Honey Bunch. Viva. Dude ain't dying. Oh, I wonder if he's got that, um, they call that ability, die hard ability. Oh, there's a, a special feat for, like, barbarians, for example, where once they get to level zero for their health, they don't die immediately. They got, like, one more round in them. Die hard, there it is. You are especially hard to kill when your hit point total is below zero, but you are not killed. You can fight uh, for one more round if this is. As if to say, at the end of your next turn, unless brought above zero hit points, you immediately fall unconscious. So he's going to die here in a round. That means he gets one more attack off on us, which is bullshit. The only way that doesn't work is if you do enough damage to straight up... Son of a bitch, 14, man. Uh, if you do enough damage to him where he is actually... Would have been just straight up murdered, he just dies. So he's going to be dead, but we might as well try to finish him off. Like so. No, I took some damage on that last hit because he was a diehard son of a bitch. As you can see, she took some damage. Uh, but we have land hand self. Might as well use them. There's no reason to hold on to those things. A bright future awaits us. What did he have? Anything of value? Ooh, ring of protection. Bet. Yep, sure was. Let's see it right down there. Nothing else in here, right? Doesn't appear to be. Alright, we bounce go. out of here then. Right, let's do a quick check on that ring of protection. Oh, since I am the delicate snowflake, I think I'll give it to me. And you see that my armor class went up one for deflection. Deflection does not stack, so again, if I try to give myself like a shield of faith potion or spell, uh, the better of the two, which is of course the potion, would work because this is only a plus one, the, the potion's plus two. But, it's always on. So we, when I run out of potion or whatever, I always have that extra armor. That's why that matters to me. Um, where are we? Oh, that's the camera angle. Oh, that's interesting. That's a nice new addition, I think. Uh, we had a loot... Or something just left behind. Cultist loot. Oh, cultist champion. I need to fight wizard. You know, we still got stuff over there to deal with. I, I don't like this part. This is the part of the game that kind of bugs me the most, I think, is when you see through the wall a little bit, even though you're not supposed to. A door. Nothing else. Can't make the demons wait. That's a good effect, though. I tell you what. Say what you will about beta. They do a good job of making these demons. They will break <laughs> against our resolve. Hey, fellas. Mm. All right, long. 
again since they've already moved him to delay his turn. And that's why I get everyone else uh, through the damn door. And as you can see, Sela and Evoker are in the way. So again, we're going to have her delay there. My Evoker, I'm going to have him do a five foot stutter step. Turn the camera so I can see this a little bit better. To here. Are you still here? Swing to miss. Sela, we'll have her do a five foot stutter step to this guy here. <laughs> that was a solid hit. Now, Camila can come up in here and kill this guy, hopefully. Nope. Come on. Do his proud mom. You've crossed the wrong line. That's a boy. God, that hurts. Oh, it hurt. That super hurt. That was not cool, man. Uh, all right. I'm trying to weaken you. Well, the nice animation, I will say that. Suck ass swing, but whatever. That's not your fault. The inheritor, guide my blade. We need this doofus to die, though. His brother meeting here. Evoker is getting killed. We can't have it. I could heal him with Camilla, but I think she's just better suited fucking trying to kill the guy. Because he does so much damage that I think, I mean, even if she healed him, he'd only heal for like maybe seven. Another hit from that damn thing is probably going to kill him anyway. Let's try to kill him. Nope. No joy. Come on. I'll fuck stutter step in here so I can see a little bit. Make better. every strike count! <laughs> whiffed on that one. Uh, I'm gonna do the cantrip trick again because I get two swings. Damn you. Price of one. They got attack my opportunity for that. I forgot about that shit. That sucked. Oh, good shot, hon. Camilla. I'll cut you wide open. Give me Camilla. Come on. Bring it on. Ooh, that was rough. What we got here? We got a uh, scroll of remove sickness. Hostilis orders. Follow these simple rules or you will die. Don't bother me unless strictly necessary. Keep the door to the shrine locked with the key I made. I don't care which one of you two holds onto it. You can tear each other to shreds over it for all I care. Don't even think of setting foot in the ritual chamber ever. Keep the door to the unfinished section of the maze locked at all times. As a reminder for you feeble-minded vermin, the entrance is still using the hidden lever, the torch, and the wall next to the door. The door itself is in the room with a blood pool where I sometimes relax. Charming. Do something about the damn water elemental already. Do whatever you want with it. Just make sure it's gone by tomorrow. Find a better hiding place for the paladin's sword from the surface. I'll deal with that later. Ooh, sword. Remember that your life means less than nothing to me. I have plenty of people uh, vying to become the hand of Hatsula. Cool. Is that treasure? Sounds like it. Master with short sword. That's what Clay taking that. Okay, here. Press plate. Club. Let's get it. Cool. What treasure? Where was this treasure? I wonder if that's just unlocked something because we picked we up go. that piece of fucking treasure. So we got a door and another door. And I've taken some serious damage. Let's do a quick save here. Uh, I have potions, of course, to heal myself. And we'll do so. Fully healed. I love that. Nice fucking nine on a heal. Whoa. I think nine? I don't think that was possible. Oh, 1d8. 1d8 plus one, probably. So I probably got maximum roll on that. It used to be 1d6, I thought. Maybe it was uh, 1d6 and they upgraded it. Cool beans. Alright, now I see this here. Hold stops the movement. So I can lock in place. Always the reason that matters is so I can do shit like this. I got Mongrel and a corrupted Mongrel guard. Go for you the Mongrel. Won't surprise <laughs> on their toes as Soften well. up a little bit first before we actually start the fight. Alright, Evoker. Uh, I don't want to cast a spell. I do want to charge. Oh, that was a nice punt to the corner of the room. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> I like that. Alright, Camellia, get over here, hon. Sila, come right across that. 
closing in on Lola. Closing in on him. Uh, I want to do a five foot stutter step over here. And I want to do my can of trick. Two swings. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and did they make the save? They failed it. So now, let's talk about what just happened here. So, corrupt the mongrel guard. Fortitude save throw fail. Touch of fatigue. So, what does touch of fatigue do? If you look here up here, you can find out. Touch of Fatigue only lasts for one round per level. I'm only level two, so two rounds of him being fucked. But, uh, since it took hold, and assuming he's not immune to fatigue effects, he is officially fatigued. Fatigue, for those of you who don't know, is a minus two to your strength, a minus two to your dexterity. So that's already a penalty to his damage output and his chance to hit in his armor class, all in one spell. And, more than that, if you're fatigued, if you're a barbarian, you can't rage. If you're fatigued, you can't charge. You've got a lot of penalties from that one little spell, and that's infinite use cantrip. So again, there's a reason that we use those. It's not great, I'll grant you, but when it works like it just did, it is money. Uh, I'm gonna have her come over here and stab him in the Go face. For their hearts. Sadly nothing. Uh, now he is so far away, he still gets two attacks, but he's not within point blank shot, I don't think. So I'm going to have him five foot star step to an inch a little closer. I still don't think he's within range, so I'm just going to shoot you. That's too bad. Ah, uh, let's take a look at that swing, though. Base attack four, strength of zero. Their strength is probably uh, a 12 or a 13, and as such, we've lowered it by two points because they're fatigued. That should be a plus one there. So that should be a base attack bonus of three. That would have been a 12. That still would not have been enough to hit on the team. Thank God. See, lift. Can you finish him off? Oh, honey. All right, now I could use the fatigue again. It don't stack on itself, but it will extend the duration. I don't care about that. Uh, I think I'm just going to straight up attack him. I got this. That's too bad. Uh, the one thing that it did for me on that was I got a, a full attack without a minus two to my swing, but I only got one swing. You see that? So again, I may have hit him on the follow-up swing if I would have cast that spell. That's another reason to want to use the touch of fatigue repeatedly. Camila. You are today's sacrifice. Lon, five foot stutter step again a little closer. Now, I don't think he's still close enough for this. You've crossed the oh, wrong is. mongrel. Yeah. <laughs> so now the fatigue is probably worn off of the character. And again, you can see it up here. See the fatigue effect? It says 99 hours, 99 minutes, and 99 seconds. So that's clearly a lie. Um, but right, that could just you. be nothing more than a glitch. And again, I could always just reapply it. Good guys always win. And did they make the check? It didn't say. Must be that it's already there, so it didn't check. Cool. And again, it's a little closer. Make every strike count. That was a good shot. Oh, the fatigue just wore off. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, that was a solid hit. Now, again, I'll use the cantrip trick again. Try to reapply it. Ah, that's a sucky ass swing. The spirits demand your blood. Finally, she hits. I don't need it. I'm close range. Not bad, team. Not bad. Got some goods over here. What is that? Flower? Okay. Bodies, nothing. Being very cheap. All right, uh, map wide, where are we? So we've explored this side pretty well. How far are we on video here? Ooh, it's almost two hours. We'll go maybe another eight minutes. I think that'll push about two hours. And I'll try to give us a. Helpful, am I not? Now what is that? I love it when I find hidden treasure, like the scale mail of unidentified. Collect, please. Taking all this shit, we'll drop shit later. This is clearly a hidden room. I am helpful, am I not? You are helpful. We found all kinds of hidden loots. 
All right. Uh, let's pull up to here. Press F to follow him. Fairly certain there's no room that we left unmolested. Ugh. Take a quick camera as we're going through the area, but by and large, I'm fairly certain we just went down into the basement. Now we're coming back upstairs. Uh, right. Question is going to be where are we going from here? Oh, and we got a key, I believe. So that room that was locked. Where was that locked? I'll show the way. Oh, was that here? Possibly. Um, let's take a look at that loot. Crypt Raider's Armor. This plus one scale mail. Grants its wear plus two insight bonus armor class against undead. Ooh, hell to the yeah. Now, she is already rocking breastplate. The reason she's rocking the breastplate is because the scale mail by itself was five, which is garbage. But this is plus one. Uh, she could take it. Yeah, she's a paladin after all, and again, fighting undead's kind of her thing, but she's also a spirit hunter, so I'm cool with giving it to her. Do that, and now we can drop this breastplate. Now this would be something worth selling. When it comes to gear for over overloading your party, notice that we have individual weights as well as weights uh, for the whole party. Notice that we're light encumbered right now, no penalty. We're about to fucking reach the next level, that's when we start getting fatigued faster and move slower and blah blah blah. Uh, but when it comes to selling gear, usually I go as a strict, how much is it worth? In this case, you see 50 coin, that's the circle on the side there. 50 coin, 30 pounds. If it's a one-to-one -one or better ratio, where one gold per pound, I usually try to keep it. So this would be something we'll try to sell later. Uh, as an example, daggers are always a one-to-one. -one. So if you uh, info this thing, you can see one gold per pound. That's about as low as I go. If it's something that's like a club, it's three pounds, but it's one gold. This is something that you drop as soon as you can. If you can take them all back and sell them, hey, man, be that miser. I've done that shit before, too. But uh, if I'm uh, getting to the point where I'm close to overweight, the, the first thing that go are the stuff that's the, the most expensive that's not worth that much. Here's another example. Three gold, six pounds. Fuck that shit. Uh, and I got two of those things. And you see we're already getting much lighter. Uh, usually we get some stuff though that's really of value, like a composite longbow, composite short bows. They're not magic, but they're usually worth like 50 bucks and they only weigh like one or two or three pounds. So it's again something that's high value. Uh, same with your um, crossbows. 13 bucks for eight pounds is worth it. Light crossbow, nine bucks for four pounds is extremely worth it. Again, and, and all these little fodder things, these are so light that you still never really drop them because they're always worth way more, even if it's worth a buck. It usually weighs less than a pound, whatever we're talking about. Uh, you see we have these Masterwork Glaives, and Masterwork items in general, which are all these ones up here, are uh, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Ooh, we got Masterwork Long Sword. That's cold iron. Yeah. Give me all of that. Hell yeah. Ooh, and it's shiny. Uh, that's a better swing for her because it's Masterwork. That's cold iron, which means, of course, it works well on the damage reduction that we just talked about for those demons. Uh, so that's a perfect upgrade for her. That's very nice. Now you notice we have a cold iron masterwork a dueling sword. This again would be something that would be amazing if someone could use it. We don't have anyone that can. This is a exotic weapon. Uh, because it's the exotic proficiency, it's rare that anyone picks this up. Uh, a sword saint, on the other hand, uh, can make some serious use out of this if that's the weapon that they picked. Because whatever weapon you pick, you're trained in. doesn't matter if it's exotic, simple, martial weapon proficiency. You just have proficiency in it because that's your weapon of choice. Um, but without knowing, again, that dueling swords were anywhere in the game early, you wouldn't want to play a sword saint early levels without having a dueling sword in your hand. Sword saints require to get the buffs that they get, the extra armor and all the cool shit, the little fiddly bits that they get for being the sword saint, they have to have their, their chosen weapon in their hand. So by the fact that we get screwed over the, the tutorial by losing all our weapons and being handed garbage shit. I mean, hell, look, it took forever for me to get to a masterwork short sword. And it's still not the weapon that I want. I want her rapier, quite frankly, or a scimitar. Something like that would work well for me. And again, I'm not seeing any drop. So we're kind of getting boned here. That's why, uh, well, actually, I take that back. There's the rapiers over here. I could switch to that. But again, then I have a penalty to my um, swing, sort of. The Masterwork Short Sword has a plus one to its swing. So if you go over here, you see the plus four. You see the plus one other. 
that's not going to be there if I switch over to this weapon. On the off uh, other point, though, this one has a better crit range and uh, has the same damage potential, 1 to 6. So again, decent damage. you got to like the fact that it does decent damage. But that crit range, baby, that's the reason that you're shooting for that one. If I could switch over to it, I would. Um, I'm not going to because, I'd again, I'd rather have that plus 1 because we're still with him left and right. And again, this, this uh, illustrates the point that on the harder difficulties, which this is not, the harder difficulties we would be having some serious problems. We would not have this many potions on our hand. I mean, we would have been using these things left and right to, to heal ourselves as well as to buff ourselves up. Uh, we finally got ourselves a bark skin potion. I would have used this reduced person potion on her or him a long time ago for extra armor. Again, lots of good stuff, uh, but it's one of those things where uh, it, it gets uh, cumbersome very quick in the higher, harder difficulties. Save here. Hey, what up, yo? Cultist champion. Oof, he was being mean. Tazila. Um, I'm not gonna do the trick. I'm just gonna attack. Damn you! Yeah, that didn't do shit. Mila, uh, now, uh, if you're having a hard time, uh, rotate the camera here, if you're having a hard time getting a straight beeline him without, like, stepping on someone's toes, you can stutter step this way, oh, stutter step, I shouldn't say that, it's not five foot, you can do, like, a tiny step, a tiny step, to flank around proper, another reason I like turn-based combat, because it, it gives you the freedom to do that kind of shit, same with, like, her, I can do, like, this, Into the fray. wow, that was terrible, come on, I'm gonna have him stutter step over here. What the actual hell what kind of armor is this dude rocking? 22. Oof. Okay. That's fair. Um, well, this would be a good chance for me to show you. Uh, shocking grass. Fuck it. Let's buff up our weapon. Shocking grass. This is a, a spell use now, like an actual good spell. We're gonna shocking grass this prick. Uh, through our weapon using spell combat and spell strike. If it works, if we hit, whether it's the first hit or the second, it doesn't matter. The first time it connects, we will dish out 2d6 of damage because we're level 2. So it's 1d6 per caster level, maximum of 5d6. If it crits, it'll do more damage. And we whiffed and we whiffed. But the spell is still stored in my hand slash weapon. So as long as I don't shut those toggles off, I'll still be able to connect with it hopefully before he dies if he dies first I'm not going to bitch but so far we haven't been able to hit the motherfucker so pretty good chance that we're going to get a chance to swing at him in the next combat round yeah! this dude's tough mother alright now I'm going to attack I got this. there it is now you see the 8 extra damage that's from electricity you see the 2d6 there and again that's because we hit with our weapon it was stored in there if I had cast another spell before hitting him I would have lost my shocking grasp. But it delivers it through the weapon. Now this is a traditional magus trick. This is what magus are usually built around. You channel your spells through your weapon. And there's even an eldritch archer magus that can do the same thing. However, their trick is with a ranged weapon, it's eldritch archer, and it's not uh, the melee touch attacks like shocking grass, corrosive touch, things of this nature. It is the ray spells or the ranged touch attacks. Now the good news for eldritch archers is A, it's easier to stay at distance. B, um, when you hit them, uh, you can use cantrips, just like we use our touch of fatigue, infinitely. But the difference is, is touch of fatigue does no damage. The cantrips that are ray spells, or the ranged touch attack cantrips, are your ray of frost, your acid splash, and your disrupt undead, obviously only good against undead. Those three give you extra damage then with your arrows, your your crossbow bolts, your sling staff bullets, you know, whatever ranged weapon you're choosing to, to channel your spell through. That's cool because it gives you now damage potential on top of the weapon infinitely. It may not be amazing, but let's just say it one to three points of extra fucking acid damage is one to three points of extra acid damage. I mean that's worth something. So Elder Chargers are actually kind of fun. And uh, modders in the Pathfinder Kingmaker game have made it where those melee touch attacks with a, a feat upgrade for the Elder Chargers only 
they can now channel the melee touch attacks through their bow or, or ranged weapon, whatever. So Shocking Grass can be shot. Uh, corrosive Touch could be shot. Hell, Vampiric Touch, which damages them and heals you, could be shot at a distance, and that's fucking funny. Uh, they don't have that, I don't think, in this game, and the modders haven't gotten into this game quite to the same degree yet. But you know they're gonna. Just trying to get behind them. Go for their home. Yeah. I know it did nothing, but I, I still like the placement. Zila. Oh. Swing and miss. Oh, fuck him up. Long's oh, doing help. Ooh. You yeah, jumped me in the face. Alright, now that I've cast my spell. Notice A still I still have my arcane enhancement weapon buff. It's a plus one to my weapon. Plus one to swing, plus one to damage. Um I can still use my infinite use cantrip. We got a type of opportunity on my That was a bad idea. Uh, touch fatigue. Hit him. He was successful on his saving throw, though. See that? And my DC check on that is 14. Why is the DC check 14? Again, base is 10. The level of the spell is 0. And then 14 must come from my charisma. My charisma? There it is. Plus 4. So the higher I make my charisma, the better that DC check's going to be. Still, he saved it pretty damn easily. Well, not pretty easy. He had a 15 out of 14. Uh, but he only needed to roll a 4 or better. So again, I'm not really pumping that that uh, DC check through the moon. But I can get that 14 up to a significantly better number. Uh, and let's give you some frame of reference for significant before we stop killing this motherfucker and probably calling the video quits after this fight. Um, the DC check... Some people, uh, just again for framework reference, some people the DC check is everything. Uh, saving throws really need to land on most cases. So having that, that DC check be high, high, high is better than average chance that the bad guys are going to fail it. Which means the effect goes off or it's full damage or you know whatever the effect you're trying for. So let's give you some framework reference for a DC check. So again, base of 10 level of the spell, so that's 0 through 9, depending on the type of caster that we are. I can only get to caster level, uh, spell level 6. So for me, it's 0 to 6. So again, 10 and 6, best case scenario, that's a 16, which would have worked on this motherfucker. But again, that would have been a level 6 spell. But, now throw in the charisma modifier. Now my charisma modifier right now is a plus 4, but by the end of the build, I'm planning on having it to be a 24, which means it would be a plus 7. Okay, so that's a pretty significant increase. So plus 7 that, son of a bitch. So 10 and uh, 6, 16, plus 7 more. That's a 23 for my best spell. Now, I can get it higher than that. So 23 is not, nothing to sneeze at, but it's not that good. I can get it higher than that with things like spell focus, greater spell focus. I can get it with elemental focus, greater elemental focus, and, and other gear besides that can push those DC checks higher, higher, higher. So again, for frame reference, 10 and 6 and 7 is 13, 23. Add another 2 to 6 on there, so 25 to 29. That's a respectable DC check. If you can get your DC checks to be anywhere near 30 or better, you're probably doing well. That doesn't mean it's going to work every time. Let's be real clear on this. There's going to be plenty of bad guys, especially at the end of the game, that are going to have DC uh, check saving throws where their fortitude is going to be not plus 10, it's going to be like plus 20. So it's going to be really hard still for you to land a lot of your shit. But again, better is always better. So you can plan around that. You can uh, say, fuck it, I don't care about the DC check. I'm going to use spells where there's no saving throws. You can do spells, again, uh, that have no spell resistance. And just say, fuck it, I don't care if my spell uh, uh, does you know, minimal damage or whatever. It's just good enough for me because I, I still need to know... That I'm inflicting damage. So I would routinely pick spells that have no saving throw, the auto hit, and if at all possible, uh, no spell resistance. Just so that they'll do stuff. And they'll be lame spells. They'll do like minor damage. But that minor damage is at least damage. And I can rely on it. So again, everyone's different on that shit. But everybody has their own little take on the best way of, of making their caster character. No glory without risk. I'm on. You won't survive me. That's my buddy. 
This guy is tough, little cookie. All right, uh, I'm not gonna do the cantrip again because I'm getting a tax of opportunity on myself. And fuck that shit. Uh, I will stab me in the face though. Good guys always win. You are today's sacrifice. The inheritor, guide my blade. <laughs> yep. All right. That's my buddy. Ooh. Getting my oh ass my God. kicked. You almost killed me. Oh man, come on guys, we gotta kill this bastard off. Uh I made it. The spirits demand your blood! Oh, did that take my turn? That sucked. The light. That's my guy. Alright. You can trust Let's me. Make sure to shut that shit off. It'll burn up its uses because it's per round. That's a nice effect though. This and we'll pilfer through the stuff here in a second. Let's do a quick save before I do something stupid. He was guarding good stuff. Okay, we'll take it all of it, sort through it here in a second, drop on the floor the stuff that we don't want. And off we go. That buff of hers is still lasting on us for some reason, as far as just the, the look of it, and that's clearly a bug, but I'm not going to report it. I don't really care about stuff like that. Someone else will figure that out. Well, let's see. What do we just pick up? So we have a scale mill. Let's drop it. Another one. And, uh, oh, sorry, just real quick. The sell price on this is 12 bucks for 30 pounds of weight. Another example of, fuck you. I don't want that. Chain shirts, on the other hand. 25 bucks, 25 weight. It's heavy, but it's worth the pennies. But again, we'll pick it up before we leave. Uh, just because I'm trying to keep my weight down. Um, here's a dueling sword that no one's going to use. Again, five bucks, three pounds. It's worth having, but no one's using it, so we might as well get rid of it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, I just picked up a dwarven war axe. What's this here? Slimy skin. Ingredient. Cool. Here's a sickle. A monk type weapon. Oh, here is a war hammer. Spears. Quarter staffs. Looks like we found some rations somewhere along the way there because I don't remember getting more back. We did rest. We had eight before. We had to use four rations to feed ourselves, I'm sure. Oh, unless I forget to click something. Um, got a lot of matchwork stuff up here. They're heavy, but you know what? I'm going to keep all that shit because that's money in the bank. Ooh, a matchwork falcata. Those are good weapons, too. That's not the best crit range. 19 to 20 is decent. It's just not great. 18 to 20 is your best. Uh, but the the fact that when it does crit, it does three times the damage. is the fun. And it's not times, by the way, on that. Last thing probably say before we wrap this video up. Uh, when you're talking about the multiplier, a lot of people get hung up on the damage. They're like, I did 19 damage because I critted. And that damage was times two. How the hell do I get to 19? How the f what? What? With like a half a point of damage in there somewhere times two? No. The way this works is it rolls it twice. In this case, three times. So your damage could be a one, an eight, or anywhere in between. Or two to nine in this guy's case. So again, it could be a two, a nine, a five, and add all that up, and that was his crit. So it's not going to be like he rolled a nine, a nine, and a nine. It could happen, but it's not likely. It could be a two, a two, and a two. It's likely. Not unlikely, but it's one of those where it could happen. So again, that's why you're seeing weird-ass numbers when you're seeing the multiplier, and you're like, how the hell does that divide by three or two or whatever? It doesn't. It's just they're rolling it multiple times. Um, but that's an awesome weapon for somebody. That's just not me. Again, another exotic. Um, what do we pick up here? Cold iron master javelin. Now, again, this is a ranged weapon. Notice how it says quality of uh, uh, for the weapon is strength as well. So for these weapons, they're thrown weapons. Because they're thrown, it's still dex to hit, it's strength modifier, though, for extra damage. So if you have, like me, I'd have a plus two to a hit, plus one to the damage, because it's a strength-based weapon. It's a lame range, 30 feet, so it's point-blank range by default. But again, you can have some fun with javelins. And javelins are interesting in that they're one-handed weapons. So if you do a two-handed fighting style, at least in Pathfinder Kingmaker, you could have a javelin in one hand and a javelin in the other, and you could double attack. Javelin, 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 just you know, go all fucking Spartacus on their ass. And 
it's cool. It's just not something I particularly care about. Um, we got ourselves some nice potions, potion of cold resist, various endurance, that's a nice health, and it's, you know, slash con. Um, decent. Uh, I definitely want to heal up before we officially uh, take a knee or take a break, however you want to call it. Uh, and I definitely want to heal her up as well. One more. Good enough. Okay. With that, though, we are here. Is there anything else in this room that I needed to deal with? I don't think I can so. Handle it. Let's get us to where we're going to be at the start of the next video so that I don't have to think. Um, this way. Get that in here. Yep. This way. That was, I believe, our locked door. So I think we will start our video here tomorrow. With that, though, my name is Brother Mute. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Now that I have the ability to mod, uh, or to mod, to use mods to power level characters up, I can do arbitrary builds. Now, arbitrary in that, again, I don't know what kind of gear is going to drop really in the game. I mean, I can uh, hypothesize based on Kingmaker, but by and large, I don't know what the cool weapons are. Uh, so don't be, I need a good blah blah build for this doodling sword guy. Do you know that we're going to get doodling sword? Because I've only found one and I just dropped a little fucker just not too long ago. So it's just not the best idea. That doesn't mean you won't find one. It's just be real choosy when you, you pick your weapons, guys, is my point. Um, but if you guys want to see a build in this game, I can do so. But all I can do right now is level 1 through 20 character. I can't do any of the epic, or sorry, I keep saying epic, the mythic path stuff. Because from what it tells me in the tooltips, it has a good potential of breaking the game. It's not that the game will be broken permanently, just that your game won't work right. And again, I don't want to try to showcase stuff and go, oh, and the game crashed. Damn it. <laughs> so again, it's already a buggy game as it is. I don't need to have more reasons for you to want to not play it. Because the game is fun. And I think you're going to enjoy this game. And hopefully it's as long, if not longer, than Kingmaker. Kingmaker, uh, if you ever watched my little playthrough from start to finish, I did multiple playthroughs, but uh, I did one where it was completed. And that completed playthrough was well over 100 hours. So it's a big game. Uh, so if this one's remotely the same uh, or better, you'll definitely get your money's worth out of it. It's one of the other things that uh, I have friends at work, for example, that will bitch at me about, well, how can you waste, you know, $2,700 on your new computer and all this other stuff that you, you're paying for in the game is pricey. What the hell? And I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I don't gamble, I don't drink, I don't smoke, so I have plenty of spare money to do what I want to do, and if you look at the amount of hours that I play this game versus how much the game costs me, if I can get an hour to buck ratio, I consider it a good game. And certainly I'm going to get that money back. Because I'll, like, theorycraft alone for hours on end on a game like this, let alone play it and play it multiple times. And if the game lasts for 50 hours, you play it twice, that's 100 hours. The game cost me 114 bucks, I want to say, because I bought it in beta. To do that, that means I'm uh, sponsoring them and blah, blah, blah. So the, you know, I get, like, my name in the credits or some shit, which is cool. And, of course, I get beta access, which is how we're playing it right now. So, again, I consider that money well spent. I don't know how you guys fucking spend your money, and I don't particularly care. But it's one of those where when people are like, oh, you're wasting money on video games. Uh, no, I am enjoying my downtime by playing video games. And I enjoy playing games like this for long periods of time because I love the art. I love the style. I love the, the story. I love theory crafting characters, playing new characters, new scenarios. So how would I beat this on the harder difficulties? How would I play this on the... Normal difficulties is completely different play style. So again, I like that about video games. It's one of the reasons I enjoy doing these videos for you guys. But with that, my name is Brother Mute. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.